Hey everybody, Bob here, and man, we're gonna have some fun today. We have one of the uh, up and comers in the world of fishing, Chad Smith with us today. Chad Smith Fishing. Hey Chad, how you doing? Good, Bob, how are you doing today? We're doing, we're doing good. Uh, thanks for being with us. It's exciting to just kind of chat with you for a little bit here. You got a lot going on right now. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, man. It's, it's fun to be a part of these things, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and chat some fishing. Yeah, so this is this is kind of funny uh, backstory here for um, uh, Chad and I met by chance last yeah. summer. Was it last summer already? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well. Wow. Both on our way to ICAST 2019, and we happened to be in the airport, and I think I was getting a beverage or something to eat or whatever, and you and some, I can't remember who you were with, were just sitting there yeah. talking about it, and we just started <laughs> shooting the, the shit and um, next thing we know I get on the airplane and you're sitting right next to me. <laughs> I know I couldn't believe it like it's so it's such a small world how that can just happen. That yeah. is crazy, crazy. And then we shared uh, shared an Uber to the hotel to actually to my hotel and what I didn't realize yeah. was that your hotel was oh, I don't know how far away it was and you had to walk and I didn't realize that. But oh yeah no. <laughs> It was awesome. It got me closer in general, and I don't mind walking, but yeah, I didn't even know where I was going. So, I <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chad, uh, give me this kind of level set. This is what I call level set here is your background and, you know, where are you from and where you grew up and how you got started fishing just in a sort of a quick synopsis. Yeah, totally. Um, I've grown up around like Lake Minnetonka area kind of my whole life here in Minnesota. Um, I, I got you know, I went to Eden Prairie High School, went to Winona State for a, a small period of time. Um, and then, you know, just growing up in general, my family was kind of a, a pretty big into the outdoors, I guess you could say. And uh, my grandpa and dad kind of got me into the fishing side of things. And I, I developed a pretty, you know, lo a love for the sport at a pretty young age. I mean, it, honestly, as long as I can remember, I've been kind of fishing or do you Love remember it. that that first memory, the first catch, or you know, um, does anything stick out? It there's like probably a couple instances that really like kind of flipped that switch for me. And uh, my grandpa used to have some land up on uh, up on Rainy Lake in Moose Bay, and so we'd go on the Canada side of things. And I remember going out there, and we, my dad and him took me pike fishing actually one time we caught a bunch of them but so it was like really fast and furious it's kind of crazy so that and that was something that I'd never done and I was I was really young at that time like I can't I don't even know exactly but I was probably like four or maybe something like that but uh then otherwise just a lot of young memories up at my cabin just fishing off like some docks area and a little just uh like you know 14 foot aluminum boat with my dad and stuff like that and once I caught my first bass, that was like, uh, I you're just, in. it you're was in. weird. <laughs> it was weird, man. Like I, I had from that point on, it was like my goal in life to catch more bass. It was weird. <laughs> I think they can be addicting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you so. remember, um, so you mentioned Winona state yep. and, um, you remember that day when you went in and told your roommate, I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it was a, a talk for a while. Like, you know, my, my high school buddies, like my best friends and stuff like that, we'd all just like be hanging out and whatever. And like, just talking about life, the next stages and all that kind of stuff. And they'll tell you the same kind of thing that I'd always just had this, you know, just dream. And uh, my, when, I had a really good buddy, a roommate in college, and he, um, I mean, we were just talking about it. I went down to Winona to compete in some college fishing events and with my class load and stuff like that, long story short, it just made it really hard for me to actually get in and take that time off school. And uh, I, it just drove me nuts. It was one of those things I just started to realize, like, I wasn't really happy with, like, where things were at that moment. And it kind of just drove me stir crazy. I don't know what it was, but it, going into my sophomore year, I just remember, like, calling my dad and you know he was telling me like I'd you know he's like encouraged me to go for it which is really cool 
and uh it just was like like i'm i'm doing it i'm going for it and well, my buddy's like well that's pretty yeah. good that your parents i i give them credit right to to yeah. um you know sort of encourage you rather than the traditional sort of um course of no get the degree get the job you know all yeah. that kind of stuff you know usually a parent is going to say that um yeah. and to, for your parents to say you know you you'll you'll say what if the rest of your life if you don't do this yeah and that's that's really cool yeah and I, i'm very blessed to have that kind of a um you know support system in that way and uh they you know i've talked to them now that i've gotten a little older and thanked them for that and they you know they always have expressed to me like they always wanted to support me in something that i, I was passionate about so i'm very fortunate to have that kind of a well and, and what'll happen chad is um yeah, I'm a little older than you are. It, it happened to me uh, playing hockey growing up, and my parents supported me, and that was important to me. And, yeah. um, you know, our children, uh, when they become passionate about something, it's like, let's chase it. Let's, let's sure. drive it as much as we can and support as, support as much as we can. So I think that's probably a lesson that you'll learn. You know, you've learned, and you'll probably yeah. – uh, you know, repay that down the road. Yeah. And the prediction definitely. that you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. And so you started as a co angler for several years. Yeah. Right? The last like, yep. three years. And who did you, how did you meet the, the co angler and how did you get, you know, connected with so you could go co angling route? Yeah. So, um, yeah, fish is a co angler for like actually, I, I want to say about like four years maybe I, I did like one tournament one year. So if that would be like a fifth year, but anyway, um, I, so I was fishing locally around Lake Minnetonka, stuff like that. And I got tied in. It was actually, um, some mutual friends or some older guys. My sister knew at the time and still does, I guess, but, uh, they were all like tournament guys out on Lake Minnetonka fishing in a circuit called the, the Denny's super 30. And, um, that was kind of and still is kind of like the stout tournament, I guess you could say, on Lake Minnetonka or this area. And so getting tied in like that, you know, I ended up going fishing with a couple of these guys. Uh, and like I was, I was, I don't know, 13, 14 or something at that time. And they just took me out. And it, that really like flipped that switch into the whole oh, tournament yeah. scene for me. <laughs> so like that was like, really started becoming like a cool factor i looked up to them a big a lot and then i got to like they all knew the guys like uh seth fighter his tournament partner back here john figgy josh douglas um all those guys who fish locally around here and um i and it come the time then when i was graduating high school i got a call from seth fighters buddy john figgy and um he was entering the opens to go fish and travel with Seth. And um, he uh, basically like called me and was like, hey, I'm looking for a link, a guy that I had to do it with. I uh, can't do it anymore, long story short. And he was wondering if I was interested. And I was like, um, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know anything about it really. And like all that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, when would we leave? And he's like, like two days and i'm like i graduated high school this week and he's like oh no like i'm like hang on hang on let me call my dad talk this through with someone and like figure out what's going here like what can happen here and my dad's like you don't have to walk at graduation and i'm like hmm <laughs> so i ended up going uh and and that's really from that point and then when i went to winona state for a year and uh at once i made that decision to drop out of school I texted or, you know, hit up Figgy again and asked if he was doing the opens that following year. And he said he was, asked if I could travel with him and he said I could. And uh, then that's when like, I really got more involved with like Josh Douglas and stuff like that. And then um, I, I kind of transitioned into traveling with Josh because he kept going forward with doing the opens the next year. And uh, now then, yeah, it's kind of all history from there. Well, guys, this is an example of somebody going 
all freaking in on fishing when doesn't want to walk in his high school graduation because he's got an opportunity. And oh, by the way, college, meh, hell with that. <laughs> I don't even want to do that anymore. I'm going to go, I'm going to go fish. So obviously you have a, a lot of passion for the sport. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I, it's all I want to do, really. <laughs> and then, so I got a question for you. What do the numbers 7, 9, and 12 mean to you? What do they have in common? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the co-angler streak. <laughs> well, you know, let's, let's talk about that. What does it mean? Uh, yeah, I, man, that, that was something so special. Like, I really can't believe it really happened I guess like it it was just weird because I had a really rough start in my opens to uh like from the get-go I didn't catch my first track as a co-angler until I think it was my sixth open and um so leading up to that point and the track wasn't like crazy big or anything um when I did and I well, just I was tail between my legs, just like starting to question a lot of things and going forward. And then I, it made me take a step back that year in 2016 when I was, I was in two divisions, so six opens. Then that made me take a step back. Uh, Josh actually encouraged me to give it another shot one more year. I entered one division. And at the end of that year, and I started that year out cashing a check, missed, and then got my first top 12 on Lake Champlain to end the year and so from that point um I used that check money to enter one more division the following year and um I fished in the northern and the southern opens at the time and that's when that year kicked off I I finished in the top 12 in all of the northern opens I won co-angler the year and got a top 12 in the first Southern Open. So that it, I, I don't know what it was, but it was just like all of a sudden, like a light switch went off. And it like, I started to feel super confident in how to compete as a co-angler. And throughout that whole process leading to that, it was that learning experience of how to compete, I think. Right. And, you know, I, I took my losses for sure. Um, and I don't, I, I don't know if everyone sees that and that, that it matters, but it, it, it has been a, a learning process that took a few years. Well, I think you're being, I think you're being modest. Um, that seven, nine and 12, um, short story is Chad finished, uh, in the top 12 in seven of nine, uh, seven of nine events in a row, which is crazy good. It's almost unheard of. He has made seven out of his last nine tournament top 12s. That is probably impossible to do, but he did the impossible. So congratulations on that. And then, Thanks, and then you actually broke through and you won one as a co-angler. Yep, I won that seventh out of that streak. He has three fish. He needs five pounds even to take the lead. Five pounds, nine ounces. Chad Smith takes the lead. Your co-angler champion. Chad Smith, after making seven of nine top 12, he got that elusive win here today. So. <laughs> Crazy. So. Crazy. <laughs> Lucky number seven, I guess, or something. I don't know. And then recently you were up on Lake Vermilion, I saw, too, and that was a, yep. what, a 12th? Uh, I actually finished 18th at that one. Okay. Um, I was, I had, yeah, I finished 18th. So, like, I, I had decent points. That's a new uh, tour that I'm, or circuit trail, whatever you want to call it, that uh, sure. fish the champions tour. So that's kind of that MLF style, every fish counts um, deal. So that, that's been fun, but they have a championship at the end of it. So I'll take 18 moving forward. Yeah. And Vermilion's, you know, it's a huge body of water. So it's not like you just drop the boat in and boom, you're gone. You've got, you right. really work at it up there. Right. So yeah, it's cool. I haven't spent a lot of time up there either. And, um, it's beautiful up there. So oh, it's a to, great, great lake. Yeah. We were just up there in June. Uh, we love, we love Vermilion. It's yeah, just really yeah. a really cool place. Definitely. So, so now you're fishing on your own as a pro. 
And how has that changed? Obviously, you're on your own, but from a co-angler to a pro, what are, I mean, what are the obvious, besides the obvious, what are the differences in maybe preparation or, you know, how you have to go about your business? Yeah. Um, you know, being as a co-angler, you really kind of have to be prepared for like anything. Uh, you're subject to where your boater's going. Um, you know, for me, a valuable thing was practicing with someone like Josh or Figgy um, prior to the tournament dates and um, kind of getting a lay of the land, maybe figuring out a ton of different scenarios that I may run into and just kind of being prepared for everything, having kind of a limited quantity of tackle just to bring and stuff like that. But now fishing as a boater, you know, instead of being put in those positions, I need to go find those positions. So it's been a, a different deal having to go find the fish instead of trying to catch fish in an area that you're placed in. Um, but it's been cool being able to practice with a, a few different guys and uh, kind of just, I guess you could say studying them or just being around that more. Uh, you kind of take on some things that they've done. And um, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's different having to go out there. Like every time basically I get somewhere, like I think I have a game plan of where I want to start for like practice or something. And it's just like, you get out there and you're like, what happened to all my ideas? Right. Like, I don't know what it really where to start out here. And you're just like, let's put the trolling motor down and just start looking and just slow down and get a lay of like, you know, and then the, the belt or the gears start turning for me, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it's different. And then the whole time management in the tournament, um, and just, you know, making those adjustments on the fly and being open-minded to that, I think is a, a really valuable thing. You talk, you hear a lot about guys like fishing the moment and um, that kind of stuff. And I've, I've learned how valuable that kind of thing really can be, especially on a tournament day, because you need to be willing to change if things aren't going your way. Sure. And what's been, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of different lures and baits or whatever, but what would you say is kind of a go-to that's been really consistent uh, in producing fish for you? Yeah. Um, when I was a co-angler, I had a drop shot in my hand spinning rod that was my bread and butter for sure but um you know and with that being said i'll always have one rigged up in my boat now no matter what basically anywhere i am but um other than that you know i i think for finding fish and finding areas i, I tend to gravitate towards trying to cover a little water a little quicker um I really like having a chatterbait in my hand, fishing some offshore grass, stuff like that. Um, and it, it, it depends on the time of year, but I like, I like moving a little quicker in practice, getting a few bites somewhere and noting that area and then kind of breaking, breaking an area down more in a tournament day, sure. slowing down and that kind of stuff. So if that sure. makes sense, then if that answers your question, I guess. <laughs> sure. And now that you're on your own, one of the things you, you know, you got to cover your costs. So yep. you got to, you got to look at those sponsors and yep. make sure you're taking care of them and, you know, looking yep. for new ones and so forth. How's that been, you know, being on yeah. your own now? Yeah. You know, um, I'm still working a lot also because just to make some other ends meet with that. But I like, I'm, I've been very fortunate with my, uh, my sponsors support, you know, family almost like home. Like it, it's, it's been really cool, like from kind of the get go in that co angler stuff. I've met some some of the right people through hanging out with some guys like Josh and uh, and and stuff like that. But I I've really kind of tried, and something they taught me too was like, you know, surround yourself and with the brands that you stand behind and believe in. And so it, it turned into just like I was already using this equipment. I happened to get tied in with some of the right people. And from there, it's just kind of working my way up the totem pole. And um, I've just been fortunate to have some really awesome relationships that I've been, you know, with for a few years now. And, uh, you know, hopefully, like, hopefully a lot more to come. <laughs> well, I like the, the picture of, I think it's three boats that you had. And the one is like the 14 foot John boat with the, the rear tiller deal and now you got the luxury decked out uh it's warner's dock right yep yep 
uh, yeah, Warner's Dock out of New Ridge from Wisconsin. Um, I grabbed, picked up a new Skeeter recently from them, the FXR20. Um, and yeah, I was just thinking about it. It was, I was going through just some photos one time. I was just kind of hanging out and, uh, I, I saw like a couple of photos of my old boats. I'm like, I wonder if I can like put something together showing like the whole, like, you know, scheme of it all. And, and, uh, yeah, I, when I, when I turned 16, I had a 1994 Toyota Camry and my grandpa left me a uh, boat we called the river rat <laughs> and it was a, a boat my dad fished out of when uh, he was a kid living out on the St. Croix River and so they left me that boat uh, it had a little 15 horse Johnson on the back and uh, I built a plywood deck on it I bought a trolling motor with some like Christmas money on Craigslist one year put it up front and then uh just that was my boat and the, the Camry had a trailer hitch so I was like yes, <laughs> you're like, in I can do this now so I turned 16 got my license and and I, I just started doing that right away like um but then it just yeah you know working throughout everything and you know trying to buy a boat and stuff like that and now I'm just like so so blessed I I just every time I just you know yeah, walk it outside looks, it there. looks like that new boat's pretty well decked out yeah yeah it's it's pretty cool i got you know all the rants hds live units on there power poles um th marine products everything that i've just you know just stood behind and loved just right. everything so it's it's cool and I, i've always had a special heart in my or a special place in my heart for skeeters and uh it I, it's just so cool to be rocking it and that fxr20 is absolutely like I'm, it's, a, I'm, it's a sweet ride for sure yeah i'm arguing it's the best boat i've been in for sure it, and, it's cool um you i also saw the uh the break-in period too you did a little instagram yeah. post or whatever to, to break in yeah. i know a, a friend of mine jason dudek had to do the same thing with his boat but you can't yeah. just go ripping it right the first right. day you put it in the water right and i wanted to man it, it was like you know the first hour and stuff you gotta go like certain rpms and like after that kind of stick to something else for a little bit then once you get it going um yeah it's all broken in now but that was like the all right it's all gonna pay off then we can <laughs> you know right it's like having a like a i don't know a new candy bar or something like that and you can only eat right. this much of it you know, for a <laughs> right. little bit you exactly. can't have the whole thing yet yeah you can't, you can't just let it rip um, yep. what, then we were talking a little about, bit about your sponsors here, but what type of time commitment does it take for you? And, you know, how do you give that value back to your sponsors? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I try to just naturally promote them, um, as best as I can. You know, there's a time and place for promoting specific, I guess, things going on with that company, but, uh, you know, it, it's a, bigger time commitment than people may think you know it, it is all situational too you know certain times of years the year is busier at certain things you know when all sports show event type things are going on and stuff like that but uh social media has been a big presence for me and in, in doing that and um kind of showcasing stuff through that audience and and you, I've noticed that you try to coordinate your Instagram with your Facebook and sort of yep. uh, use similar content or the same content and just repurpose it, which is a yes. great, great strategy. Is that is that kind of something that is a strategy for you? Yeah, definitely. I like to try to keep, um, you know, I look at them basically for me as two different platforms. I'm trying to at least show, you know, the same kind of stuff to you know certain i've got people i think that are on facebook that aren't on instagram right and you know there's different um promotional aspects you can do via each media right. outlet that you can you know try to work in different ways too right um but yeah you know it's it's cool it's you know i'm not always just out there fun fishing and stuff like that uh just you know there's a few times when quite a few times when you're trying to just get you know certain content and stuff right. like that well so. i mean you know the sponsors they're they want they got to sell their product right it's right. all about them uh making the nut every month and exactly uh, you, you, the assumption is that 
you can fish. I mean, you better be able to fish, right? But then yeah. the secondary part of that is, you know, how are you going to promote my brand? Are you going to be at shows? Are you going to uh, right. deliver content with, you know, swipe up or whatever? Here's our new, um, you know, chatterbait and, you know, here's the link, you know, use, yeah. use my link for 15% off or whatever. But that's yeah. what they're looking for you to do you yeah. know, so that you can help them sell product. If they don't sell product, then you don't get sponsored. Exactly. And you know, that, that is the ultimate goal. You know, they're, they're um, compensating you in some way it's a water in hopes for that compensation back. And, you know, and, and hopefully more than that. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a two way street and, you know, that's something I've learned a lot throughout this process too. And I'm still learning how I can bring more value um, and that kind of thing. So it, it's, it's a constant learning process. And, uh, I think definitely, I, I think that's also where, you know, starting out to get in with a company that you stand behind already. If, if you can work out even, let's just figuratively speaking, say it's a 20% discount on a product you'd already be buying and you can have that kind of in connection to work with someone more and just climb that ladder. I think that's such a valuable thing. And, and, and to be patient with that can really pay off. Yeah. I think. In the and, and, you, and you have to, you're right about starting and climbing that ladder because you're not just going to walk in and be Kevin Van Dam, you know, on right. Day one, right. You right. have to, if it's maybe some, uh, you know, a 20% discount to start and then maybe you walk up to 30 or whatever, and then you start getting, free stuff and then maybe they start paying you and that's kind of yeah. how it works because they just don't um i mean there's a lot of people out there that are, they're looking for it and the, and the budgets are um it's not like they're they're flowing like the mississippi river you know it's they have right. to watch their money and and how they spend it you know completely it's so, yeah and that's why we've you know we've noticed that with a lot of people and in building our business, we built the academy now and just just yeah. launched it to teach uh, people how to grow their authority and build their following and build. You know, the main thing that we talk about is building a list, and right. you know because the followers are great, but if the yeah. algorithm changes, then you know your reach goes down. But if you have whether it's a many chat or a um, email list or whatever it is, you have that group of people that you can contact anytime you want and that's kind of we call it the secret sauce that totally. kind of put, puts you above you know the next guy who is totally. not, not doing something like that and that's what we're trying to get across and you know we have it in our in the academy and that's, absolutely that's absolutely we're, we're doing right now so that's good info that you guys are dishing that's for yeah. sure <laughs> yeah. so how about the the current environment with the you know the COVID and all that kind of stuff um you know, things shut down for a bit, but they're kind of opening back up. And how has that affected you, you know, in 2020? Yeah, uh, man, it, it's, it's crazy all of that's going on in the world. That's for sure. It's, um, it slowed things down for sure. Um, some tournaments have been postponed, uh, been rescheduled. Things are kind of starting to pick back up now. Uh, I know with some of the bigger circuits for sure, but like with the opens and stuff like that, uh, I've got a couple more weeks or whatever until I start traveling for those again. But it's really put a weird halt kind of like to my main fishing season time that I've had in the past for for traveling at, at these tournaments. And um, it's been kind of like a, a, a different kind of trade-off, I guess you could say. Like it, it's been really cool to spend some more time at home and, uh, you know, fishing around locally. But um and also i've been working a little extra i've been trying to capitalize on that get some extra money saved and, and that kind of stuff just to you know be even more ready uh for when i get back to it and and moving into next year and stuff like that but uh man it i'm itching i know that yeah. much <laughs> yeah and you know the funny thing about our sport is it naturally is a distance type thing right you're yeah. not you're not playing football where you're tackling somebody and sweating on them or whatever, right? right. You're, you're in a boat or you're on the shore or whatever, and you're not on top of each other. So it's like, you know, yeah, 
Yeah, um, no, totally. It, it, it was kind of crazy when they shut down, like Michigan shut down boat docks. You couldn't even put a boat in the water. And it was like, really, what are you yeah, talking no, about? I, you know? I agree. Out, out of anything going on, I think fishing, fortunately, is one of the things we can still promote doing right now. Right. So, you know, that's so, yeah, that, that was crazy to see all that going on for sure. In a, so in a normal year, um, yeah. you know, going forward, what what would your tournament, uh, you know, competition schedule look like? Yeah. Um, typically, like kicks off like right after new year's i usually will have a tournament down in like florida um or something like that and then from there it's either a couple after that or like one or two after that that i just stay down on the road which is fine with me being from up here in the frozen tundra of minnesota yeah it's so, perfect <laughs> yeah it works out good but um you know then then usually it seems like there might be like a month break or so but then it kind of picks back up again like end of March, April, and it seems like there's a tournament almost every month then that I'm on the road for at least like a week and a half, two week period. So it's it's a lot of travel. I value the time at home when I have it. And but I I don't know. Nothing makes me feel more alive than being out basting across the country. <laughs> no doubt about that. What and so what what advice would you have for people who, whether you're twenty two or forty two, you know, trying to get into the business? Yeah, absolutely. Um I think I think if it's something you really want to do, being persistent and surrounding yourself, just being involved in that industry as much as you can. It's funny how you end up meeting people kind of like how we met in a way, you know, it's just yeah. both on our way to ICAST, just yeah. as simple as that, you know, just happen to be on the same flight and, and stuff where it's just you meet you get tied in with people with similar interests. It, it has a funny way of kind of having that happen. I've got no rhyme or reason or anything behind that, but it, it just naturally, I think, happens. And so, you know, being involved, if you want to meet more people in your area, try to, you know, usually all the clubs and stuff have some kind of Facebook page or like um, other, you know, website of some sort or something that, you know, you can maybe get into like a Tuesday night league and then meet some people around there. And then you never know if, one of those guys are thinking about fishing in the opens the next year or something like that, where it's like, Oh, well, like, you know, maybe you could be a co-angler with them and travel together, help out with some of those costs and, and that kind of stuff. But I know that's a real broad kind of answer, but I think just getting involved as much as you can in your area. Um, I think it's funny how, how some future opportunities can arise from those things. Well, you mentioned, um, I have to bring this up. You mentioned Seth Fighter is one of your, you know, friends and somebody yep. that you looked up to. And um, obviously yep. Seth is uh, very accomplished at what he does. But I think you've been hanging around him quite a bit because I think you, you're going to the same barber, I think. I know, right? you got the same flow going. What's up with that? <laughs> he actually hit me up one time and was like, hey, who do you go to for haircut? <laughs> And, I don't know. I'm like, I don't really get a lot of hair. Like <laughs> but, but no, it, yeah, I know. It's like, I ha I couldn't, I couldn't let you get away it. without bringing that up. Yeah, no, definitely. The long hair, it's a hassle sometimes. All right. So, uh, Chad, as we wrap up here, here's, here's the question for you. And yeah. if, if you had only one setup, one rod, one reel, one line, one lure, uh, and you had to catch, you know, you had to use it. It was the only thing you could use to catch the most species of fish. What would that be? Ooh, the most species? Just, yeah, yeah not, just... I'm not talking winning tournaments, but maybe survival and maybe winning a tournament, but something that's, you know, the one setup. Man, I would probably say... Man, I feel like if I don't say drop shot, <laughs> it's going to bite me. Uh, like, I want to say something else, but probably a drop shot. Okay. Spinning rod in my hand, drop shot, with a little finesse worm on it, uh, light line, and that's my game. I think I can catch some fish. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I, I asked that question, and it's funny how you get – it's all kind of the same, but – it's different for everybody. Yeah. And I think somebody in the, in the South is going to give a completely different answer as well. 
uh, totally. different than somebody who's, you know, up north fishing Minnetonka or Lake Champlain yeah. or whatever, you know? Yeah. But no, it's, a, it's a fun question to kind of put people on the, it is. On the spot. It is. You know? <laughs> no, definitely. It's, it's fun. It's hard to answer, but that'd probably be, that'd probably be it. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like you've got, a, you have a couple things on the schedule here coming up. Uh, are you going to Sam Rayburn and Lake Hartwell or are you not going to do those? Um, so I am still going to Lake Hartwell. Um, with kind of everything going on, I was initially registered for the Central Opens, but uh, it kind of made me take a step back, I guess, long story short, to, you know, maybe withdraw from those Centrals. I have full and full plans to enter everything again next year and hoping that it's a normal year. Yeah. But, um, yeah, finishing out the Central, or sorry, Eastern Opens. Uh, so we go to Lake Hartwell, and then after that, and that's like end of September, and then after that we've got, Cherokee Lake which is like end of October now I believe um down in Tennessee and then uh Lake Oneida which would have been just like a week ago or so got canceled over in New York so uh still to be determined on a rescheduled date and I think venue for that entire tournament so sure that's to come hoping to find out that soon um but just itching to do that, and then I'm fishing locally around here in that Champions Tour, going actually down to Wabasha, Minnesota, on the Mississippi River Pool 4 to go um, fish in that tournament. That's next week, and I'll leave here in a couple days for that. So I'm excited and just trying to stay fishing, working, and keeping busy. So it's, I'm looking forward to finishing out the rest of the year. Well, that's fantastic. Chad, you got a great story. Um... I'm sure it's, you know, you're an inspiration to a lot of people and we wish you the best of luck. We uh, thank you for being with us today and um, it's great talking to you, great getting to know you. And I, I look uh, forward to getting out on that new boat with you sometime in the very Absolutely. near future, man. It, it'd be Absolutely. a lot of fun. Yeah, no, let's make it happen, man. And Bob, I appreciate you, you know, getting in touch with me about getting on here. It's, it's an awesome opportunity. I love this kind of stuff and uh, I appreciate just an avenue to, share my story too and just talk some fishing and get yeah. to know each other better we love talking fishing man thanks yep, for being absolutely. with us appreciate it chad thanks everybody yep. thank you thanks everyone